It is NFL Draft Week, and you know what that means. It's Browns talk. It's it's thinking, who could the Browns take at 54? What does it all mean? Where is this draft going to fall? The football season is getting ready to start. Browns news as well. we got a big show coming up right now on the Sick Podcast with Andy McNamara. Turn up your volume. Your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast, the Sick Podcast. with Andy McNamara. The sickest Cleveland Browns podcast. In the backfield, Latavius Murray. Huntley takes the shotgun snap. Back to pass. Let's the ball got stripped away in the air. The Browns fight for the ball, and it's picked up by Miles Garrett. He's gonna score! Touchdown! It's gonna be sick. Welcome, everybody. It is draft week. Yes, yeah, not as exciting as in years past, many years past, I guess, now with the Browns not having a first round pick, of course, but hope springs eternal. Who can we get? Who are those hidden gems? Who's this year's JOK or Martin Emerson or Dewan Jones for the Browns? We're going to be finding out. It all starts Thursday night. And, hey, we got to get ready for it, folks, right? I'm ready for it with my authentic Draft Day movie T-shirt, which I got the debut of that movie 10 years ago. This is the 10th year anniversary. I got the shirt. I'm wearing it proud. Sonny Weaver Jr. We're going to channel our Sonny Weaver Jr., our Vontae Mack, our Brian Drew, the whole bunch. We're going to get ready. Make sure you click subscribe, notifications on, click follow, share, leave your comments. Who do you want the Browns to draft? What position, what player? Who do you want them to draft? Let me know. Give us a follow on Twitter at SickPodBrowns, at AndyMC81, Instagram and TikTok at AndyMC Sports. We'll get to a little bit of Browns news as well in the facility as OTAs are going on, but it's all draft week, baby. And I'm going to bring in Nick Paulus, my guy from ESPN Cleveland. He's a producer there and co-host of Pond Paulus. Great program on ESPN Cleveland and the landondemand.com. Nick, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, Andy. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, absolutely, man. Love your work. And I thought you might appreciate not just the shirt, but the souvenir coaster. That's look, at, look at Costner. His finest work, if I dare say. His I finest work. Say anything with Kevin Costner on it, keeper. So Exactly. <laughs> this is this is the little football. It has like the little punch out. You can do the kick game, but I couldn't bring myself to it. So souvenir we're going to channel our inner Sonny Weaver, man. Are you ready for draft week? I, I can't wait. This is like one of my favorite weeks of the year. Like I will take NFL draft day over Christmas, Thanksgiving, <laughs> Easter, like any holiday, you name it. I'm probably going to take the NFL draft. over. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's all, there's all the hype. There's all those surprise risers and inevitably fallers. And, and what's that new shiny toy that your team's going to get. Now the problem for the Browns since the Deshaun Watson trade is, our toys, at least at first, maybe haven't been as as shiny. It's been kind of like a oh okay, and and you're hoping to find those diamonds in the rough. Yeah, a thousand percent. I mean, obviously, this being the last year, finally, the last year of this Watson deal, and uh, you know, obviously, we're all still hoping that you know it all works out for the yeah. best, and you know, we go on win a Super Bowl. That'll change everything, and and everything will be righted then. But until that point in time. We're dealing with all of this crap that we've been dealing with for a while now. But we're finally here. This is the final year of the Watson trade stuff. So, uh, yeah, we just get 54, what, 54, 85, and, you know, everything else. Oh, and don't forget that extra seventh round pick, uh, Nick, that we got. Don't forget (laughs) about that one. That could be our Brock Purdy. Who knows, right? Hey, we're we're praying. Brock Purdy, anybody. I'll, I'll take anybody that can win us a championship. Anybody who can help. Well, before we get to the uh, dive into sort of who or what the Browns should be taking, let's do a little house cleaning news. Uh, Browns players back in the facility and all that. And uh, some news coming out last week was the restructuring of Nick Chubb's contract. We talked about that on the show, but it was also that he's running on land. So not the water therapy, but actually like foot to pavement type of thing. Um, I'm just wondering, and I'm getting a lot of questions about this. And I know you do too, is when should we expect Nick Chubb back? He wants to play start of the season. Are you getting the vibe? It's feeling more like november Yeah, and so it's funny. Whenever this uh, injury initially happened, and obviously it was a horrific injury, yeah. we knew he was going to have multiple surgeries, I made a bet with one of my buddies saying he'll be back by you know week three. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. Just because I was so confident it's Nick Chubb. Yeah. Then take into account, my God, two knee surgeries. This guy's had many knee surgeries in the mm-hmm. past. I'm hoping I'm wrong because I would like to see him wait. You know, I know this sounds rough, but wait eight weeks, wait for yeah. half the season. Because if, if so, then it feels like you're trading to get Nick Chubb. 
at you know at the midway point of the year, and then you run the hell out of him then because yeah. you're going to in November and December if you want to compete uh, for a championship. So I I kind of feel like they're going to do the waiting game, which is the best case scenario for Nick, you know, for Nick's health as well as for this organization, you know, going forward. So yeah. I love Nick Chubb. You know, if, uh, I'm not a big Jersey guy anymore, but if I did buy a Jersey, it would be Nick Chubb. Right. And yeah. He, he's I classic. So fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Classic and fantastic. I actually have his signed uh, rookie card up there. His Jersey patch. Oh, one nice. of uh, one of 50. I got it up. got it up there. Um, everything's like a deck of cards. If I touch one thing, it's all coming down. So I'll, uh, you know, I'll leave it up, but, oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah. For Nick Chubb, I'm with you. And the other question is, of course, Nick is, we want him back, but I think people are forgetting it's not necessarily a plug and play. You're not going to get what Nick Chubb was right away. We may never get it again. We hope, but if you can get him in your week eight and then let's say, yeah, like the playoffs. And if you're getting 80% of Nick Chubb with the nice committee, they got behind him. That's a good looking backfield. Absolutely. And it's such a shame too, because I mean, he played for a game and a half, but yeah. my God, did he look like the best Nick Chubb that we've ever seen? Yeah. So yeah. it is such a shame, but Hey, 80% Nick Chubb is better than 95% of the NFL. So I'll take then you know, the last couple of months of the season. Well, and when we look at what Andrew Barry was able to do in free agency, I, it really helped not force their hand to have to go after one particular position. Running back being one of them. You add Dante, uh, Dante Foreman, who can be a short yardage guy. You have Naheem Hines, who can be in the return game, but also catch. You still have Jerome Ford, and you got uh, Pierre Strong as well. So fantasy football-wise, it's a disaster. You don't want to touch it. But real life-wise, it's a nice concoction, I think, right? Yeah, totally. And I'm a huge Pierre, uh, Pierre Strong fan. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, coming out of the draft, what was it, two years ago now, three years ago now, uh, he was, I believe, the fastest running back of his draft. So, like, the speed's there. The guy's yeah. fantastic. I think he's going to be unbelievable. If you give him an opportunity to do the kickoff return, which is you know, a whole completely new setup, but yeah. everyone's saying that it's that one cut. If you make it through the line, you could be gone. I would love to see my opportunity with Pierre Strong to get the ball in his hands as much as possible. Yeah. Now, obviously, he is not a workhorse back like Nick Chubb or anything like that. But if you give him open space, the guy can fly, and he's yeah. proven it. Yeah. It's it's another weapon. You can have him and Hines back there. You can mix and match a, a whole bunch of – and who knows who they draft. Maybe they draft the guy who's a bit of a specialist uh, in the right. return game. That's going to be so fascinating, that return game, how it works, and hopefully creates more excitement, which is the whole point. But we go to quarterback now, and we know the Browns aren't drafting a quarterback high, nor should they with the investment. But it's all about Deshaun Watson. And, Nick, what frustrates me most is, like, okay, for Nick Chubb, for example, it's I know what Nick Chubb has done very recently, and, man, I know he's going to work his way back, and, and you can hope. So you have a little bit – we don't know what Deshaun Watson is, and I'm not pointing to Houston anymore. Those days are done. That might as well not exist for me. Okay. Like we, we don't know what he is. And that's so frustrating because everything else is right there for the Browns to go all the way. Yeah. A thousand percent. And I'm, I'm with you. I was one of the few people at the station at ESPN Cleveland that was banging the table for Deshaun Watson for that trade to happen. Mm. And it's because of what he did in Houston. And obviously, like you said, Andy, we have not seen that one bit. Now there have been flashes. Yeah. Which is great. Uh, and the last time that we saw him out on the field, he went 14 of 14 in the second half, and you ended up beating who eventually became the number one seed, mm -hmm. Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore. And then you went on to beat the, or I'm sorry, the Steelers the following week without him. But it's the first time that's ever happened that you beat Baltimore and uh, the Steelers in back to back weeks. Hmm. For me, I look at it and think if Deshaun. I don't know if he's ever going to become the top five quarterback that he once was, but if you can get me top half of the league, if you can get me from eight to 12 quarterback play, this roster is as loaded as it's ever been. And we say that every year and I know that, but it really you is. Feel, you, you feel great about your chances going forward. You really do. Yeah. And that's what's, what's frustrating for fans, but also, we saw that play, but then the injuries. You bring in Ken Dorsey, everything. Really, Nick, and I said it last year, and I guess there turned out to be excuses. I said last year was no excuses. This year's really no excuses. You got Ken Dorsey in. You're revamping this offense all around Deshaun. He just has to stay on the field, and then you hope we see more of that Baltimore build out. But 
that's another thing. Is he is he gonna is he gonna slide? Is he gonna be able to sa- not sacrifice himself? Like because Joe Flacco ain't coming back to save us this year. No, he isn't. <laughs> He's if gone. Anybody, it's uh, you. You got Jameis, you know. So Jameis, Jameis. You got to do that as well. But uh, it, I, I think Watson is going to be fine this year. I, I do. I feel like the system that's set up for him right now. Maybe this is just hopefulness uh, for right. me, but. I see Ken Dorsey and what he's been able to do with the likes of Cam Newton and then what he's been able to do with Josh Allen. And I know that Josh Allen went on a run, you know, with, you know, a couple of wins after he was fired, but look at the production numbers that he was doing without Ken Dorsey there. And it's night and day different. So I love the fact that you got Ken Dorsey in here. You put everything around him to get involved with this offense and I truly do believe that Ken's going to be the guy calling the plays going forward. So you just look at the previous playbook, you know, calls that he's done with those other quarterbacks that I had mentioned. I think Watson has a very good year coming back. I don't want to say MVP or anything like that. Mm. I'm, I'm not crazy. He but, doesn't need to be that. He doesn't you know, need to be that. Just play within the system and, yeah. and just try not to turn the ball over. And you're going to win those games. Yeah. And and don't get hurt. We're we're not greedy fans here, Nick. Right. We're not greedy. I'm we're... Not Seventeen games. I'm really me, not. I'm got if, twelve. If he gave me thirteen to fourteen games and like and and top uh, quality wins, I'm totally all for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me too. That's that's the wait and see approach. But now let's move to the draft here. And in conversation with Nick Paulus from ESPN Cleveland, Nick, this draft, uh. Boy, you got a lot of quarterbacks. You got a lot of wide receivers, offensive line. What I think is going to be most interesting for Browns fans is, okay, there's the excitement, the pomp and circumstance of first draft night, which we're not a part of, but where does that first run go? Because that really is going to determine what Andrew Barry does at 54. Is there a run on quarterbacks and you get more good players pushed down? Is there an early run on, on offensive linemen? I just hope, like personally, and I'll get your what, what you're looking for. I want a wide receiver at 54. I just don't know if any of those, the ones I want are going to get there. So it really depends on what, you know, you're saying, uh, you know, wide receiver at 54 depends on who you want, because I think that yeah. this draft by 54, you might see 10 to 12 wide receivers yeah. off the board. Yep. That's Easily. The yeah. Draft. But it's not just those top 10 to 12. And then there's nothing else. This draft is completely loaded. I mean, we're talking about someone like a Malachi Corley, mm-hmm. you know, Carolina that is going to be after those top 12 picks and everyone's saying that he could be the next Debo you know like there's a lot going out uh, out there and it just all depends on system fit everything like that I look at like you were talking about the runs like you're gonna see probably five quarterbacks taken in the first round maybe six if you see Bo Nix getting drafted uh, you know for like the late end you know uh 32nd you know someone trades back in trades to, up yeah exactly to get that fifth year option for the quarterbacks but I think you're going to see five quarterbacks taken in the first round no doubt in my mind about that and then you're going to see again 10 to 12 wide receivers by the time that you pick at 54 I would love to see a wide receiver as well I'm just not a hundred percent convinced that's exactly where they're going to go. I could see defensive tackle. If someone drops, sure. uh, everyone's talking offensive tackle right now. Mm. Maybe, you know, I, you still got a year with Jed. You still, you picked up Dewan Jones last year. Yeah. Uh, you know, Conklin's coming off of injury again. So I know you need depth there, but I'm, I'm with you. I'd love to see a playmaker, whether that's wide receiver more even running back in. I know Trey Benson came in uh, and did a top 30 visit with him, the Florida State running back. Every single mock draft that I've seen, he's right around there. I, it would hmm. not surprise me if the Browns started looking at wide receiver. And I saw Mel Kuyper did his uh, stuff today, you know, where, you know, like the position needs for it. Right. And for uh, the Browns, it was running back, wide receiver, defensive tackle. I could totally see all of those in play. Interesting. And, and and yeah, that's with this wide receiver group, I think with how this offense is shifting under Ken Dorsey, it is even more important because you need more bodies. People say they got a lot of wide receivers. Well, not really if you take into account inevitable injuries or or play up because now we're going 11 personnel. We're not doing two, three tight end sets. We're having David and Joku yep. and name your running back and the rest are receivers. So you need, you got Amari Cooper. We hope Jerry Judy's great and elevates. Andrew Barry certainly believes in him. 
mm -hmm. uh, uh, Moore, Cedric Tillman, Bell. So that seems like a lot, but if one of those guys falls flat or not, you you need somebody else there. So yeah, that's that's where it gets interesting if they see if there's a, a value. I want to get your take on Cedric Tillman. I'm high on this guy, man. I I think Cedric Tillman, if he's given the opportunity, Nick, is going to be somebody that we could look back to a time like this and think, man, where did he come from? I, I just think he's got all the tools. Yeah, I love Cedric Tillman coming out of the draft. I yeah. think that he is fantastic. I, I really do believe that. He just didn't get enough opportunities no. last year. And it's hard to get a lot of opportunities whenever you play five quarterbacks. Let's be honest. Well, like, that's that's what it comes yeah. down to. If yes. Deshaun is the entire year or hell, like, let's say Deshaun goes out and then you're with Flacco for the majority of the year. I feel great about my chances of him getting more opportunities. Now, rookie wide receivers, you know, a lot of them, it takes a little bit of time to, uh, mm -hmm. to uh, develop. Not everyone's Puka Nakua, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson. Not everyone's like that. Sometimes it takes you a little bit of time to get seasoned. I like said Tillman a lot. I do. And I think that he, w given the opportunity, could absolutely produce. But is that how the coaching staff feels? You know, like it's, it. they, we've seen him the entire time. I think if they end up drafting a wide receiver at 54, that's a little bit of an indictment against Tillman and hmm. maybe that maybe he's not who we thought he might be. Uh, again, I love, I love him. I love, uh, you know, all of the, you know, everything that he is. I mean, the guys, he, I think he's a huge stud. He can fly down the field, he catches literally everything in college. That was, you know, willing away. blocker. He like blocker. We saw that. Yeah, no doubt. I, I like said a lot, but if they draft a wide receiver, I think that's whenever hmm. it, going to be a little bit telling about where this coaching staff thinks he's at right now interesting yeah it, and it very well could be could be just that and remember too he was behind donovan people's jones before he got traded so there he's even further on the depth chart right. last year i just feel i'm getting a feeling like i want wide receiver i'm getting a hunch if he, barry doesn't trade out and i hope just from a fan perspective like don't trade out we wait you wait all thursday and friday come on give us something yeah but couldn't you see again like he loves his cornerback he loves the secondary he shocked us with Martin Emerson a couple years ago. He did. I, and that was, you know, George Pickens was on the board and they decided. Yeah. To, and don't get me wrong. George Pickens is really good. Martin Emerson's better. He just is. And Absolutely. A all player. So he made the right choice there. Also, George Pickens, head case. <laughs> That's just oh, yeah. So, you can have him Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, right. And, and again, the kid's a stud. And if he gets his head straight, he's sure. going to be awesome. But. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, Andrew Barry will always draft a corner. He, that's that's his bread and butter. He knows exactly where to find them. Um, I, I just look at someone like uh, uh, Mitchell uh, that we drafted out of Northwestern last year. Guy's really good, too. And best friends with uh, Greg Newsom, too. Mm -hmm. They've already come out and said that they're not planning on trading Greg Newsom. They're going to give him another uh, probably pick up his fifth-year option here relatively soon. So we're going to see all that. But he's always going to draft a corner. I don't know if it's going to be at 54 or 85 or you know, one of those couple of first picks, but they absolutely will come out of this weekend with at least another corner. Yeah, they'll come out with another corner and another offensive lineman. And yeah, no I'm fine with that. After that fifth round DeWan Jones pickup, like that's uh, when you don't, when you give away your first round picks, Nick, that's where you have to hit. Absolutely. And, and he has. You, you need to be able to hit those late round picks. And Dewan Jones, everyone said, you know, coming out of college, you know, man, if he loves the game of football, he mm -hmm. could be a first round talent. The only reason why he fell is because people thought he liked basketball but more than football. I don't care if you like basketball a lot. Do you want to play football? Yeah. He's, yes, he worked his ass off and he turned out to be one of the best players in this past draft. I absolutely think he's a steal. I think he's actually going to start. Uh, coming up. And I know that's a lot mm. of people are saying, you know, uh, Conklin, you know, he's got all the money. He's got everything. You're going to play who's best. And I right. think that what a good coach does. And I think Kevin Stefanski is a good coach. He realizes that. Yeah. Uh, th that offensive line is going to be very interesting. And you, you're going to need to use maybe next year's first round pick is used on an offensive tackle because uh, you're going right. to have to be making some real tough decisions soon. Cause Jed Wills average, not the best, not the worst average. Right. Conklin can't stay healthy. We like Dewan Jones, and then we get into do you flip Jones over? And that's that's for another right. that's that's for another day. A whole um, different pod. Right? <laughs> that's all. That's a whole different pod, brother. Oh, Absolutely. Okay. So let's finish on this, Nick. Browns do what, and you're happy with their draft coming out 
of this weekend? If they do, is it staying put at 54? Is it, I just don't want them to trade down. If they don't trade down, I think I can be happy. I'm hoping they don't trade down. I, with my luck, they will trade down just because I, this is how this always goes. But yeah. I think I, I hope they stay at 54 and I hope that they get a playmaker at 54, whether mm -hmm. that is a, I know a lot of people are saying like a pass rushing defensive tackle. I'd be you okay sure. with that, but who, who are you going to get? Uh, I, I would love to see a wide receiver. I think the likes of a lot of people are saying like Troy Franklin, I'm seeing right. a lot of uh, the uh, uh, wide receiver from Florida state, Keon Coleman, uh, a lot like of people him. are starting to, you know, link him, uh, you know, to right around there. I'd be totally fine with that. I, I just don't know who's going to fall. We know that the run is going to be there for the wide receivers, but where's it going to go? Um, so I, I think wide receiver goes at 54. Don't be surprised. And, and I'm going to throw this one out there. It's going to okay. be late, but you got another, what, uh, you got that other seventh. I don't know if he'll be there in the seventh. You might have to draft him a little higher than that. But if they go quarterback, if they go quarterback, Joe Milton from Tennessee, he is raw. Hmm. But six foot, what, five? I, the guy has a cannon for an arm. Tennessee. Jimmy Haslam. Yeah. I see something like that happening because he's a project of all projects, but he's so raw. Maybe they can get him in there. And the body type for him is perfect for the Ken Dorsey system. I, if huh. you came up with Milton, and again, late in the draft, I'm not talking third, fourth, yeah. I'm talking fifth and beyond. If you get him, I would love to see that pairing and see maybe there's something there going forward. Maybe with DTR still suffering from that hip, right? Exactly. Maybe, maybe that, and you got that extra seventh, you can package. Barry's going to trade something. We don't know if it's up down, but okay. something, there's going to be a trade. No doubt. Yeah. Barry, Barry loves to trade back. So like that seventh pick that they picked up, you could see him flipping that for like a sixth next year, but just moving right. out of that. That's, that's the Andrew Barry special. Those late round draft picks, he sends them next year to go around above, you know, for teams that are desperate to find that next Brock Purdy. Good luck with that. Uh, he, yeah. he loves being able to pick up sixth and, you know, give away sevenths. Yeah, I think uh, uh, ESPN Cleveland's Tony Grossi said it's it's akin to having change in your pocket. You know, you have you like you never know when you're going to need a couple pennies, even it out, right? Never know, no <laughs> doubt about that. That's what it might be, Nick. Great stuff, man. Tell people where they can find you, watch you, hear you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anywhere on uh, you know ESPN Cleveland eight fifty ESPN Cleveland uh, here in the city of Cleveland. Uh, Paul and Paulus on Saturdays from ten to noon. Uh, you know we're the producer for Cleveland Browns Daily, so tune in daily yeah. one to three. And then you know I I basically pick up hosting jobs every which you know every you know now and then. Uh, we're doing post game for the Cavs. I know this is a Browns pod, but I'm hey. uh, doing post game shows for all the Cavs playoff games. I'm the lead for that. I'm joined. Uh, uh, next one is going to be Thursday night with Emmett Golden. So tune in right around 9.30 to 11 o'clock on 8.50 or uh, the Land on Demand. And, uh, you know, tune in. We're hopefully for, you know, 3-0 against uh, the Orlando Magic. Let's go. All right, buddy. Good stuff. Enjoy the draft. Thank you, brother. Have a good one. You too. There he goes. Nick Paulus. Get him. As he said, 8.50 ESPN Cleveland or how I listen, the thelandondemand.com. The app there, you get all the stuff on demand. You can listen, watch live. It's if you're a Browns fan, it's fantastic. It's it's absolutely fantastic. I listen to it. It's a great gift as well. TLOD land on demand.com. That's Nick Pollitz from Paw and Paulus. Interesting thought on the quarterback by Nick at the end there. And I could see that because heck, if you got those extra picks or you bundle or, or you got some, or you've picked up your receiver, D tackle, corner and uh, offensive lineman and there's joe milton sitting there maybe that makes sense makes the tennessee connection the guy i want and i brought him up a few shows ago right after the combine actually so i guess what was that end of february keaton slovis that's the guy i want if the browns pick up give me a seventh round you can get a seventh round maybe even undrafted seventh round if you don't go the joe milton road because i do like what nick was saying there keaton slovis six two big hands Ran the fastest 40 time of the quarterbacks that ran. Not everybody ran. Um, my analysis was this. Crisp short throws, good footwork, shifts weight to front foot well, looked very natural, very smooth. Nice placement on the outside line ball. Powerful deep ball. Now, knocks on. Reason why he's going to be this late. 
missed uh, the last eight games with a shoulder injury this year. That was the only notable injury of his career. And also played at three different schools. Kept bouncing around. Not a lot of rhythm. Didn't run. Wasn't, you know, quote, mobile. But clearly has the athleticism to move some. So that would be a developmental guy I would love. Yeah, I think you just need some more size. And DTR, love the love the chutzpah, love the, love the moxie. Man, he just keeps getting injured. So I don't know. They're not going to cut him. But I'm not sure if um, it's a position for the backup and the grooming of young talent, that quarterback, that you want to hang your hat on DTR right now. Keen Slovis would be my pick. Joe Milton is who Nick Paulus is saying. Is there a quarterback you guys like? Do you like a QB in this draft? Let me know. Leave a comment. Hit us up on Twitter, X, at SickPodBrowns, at AndyMC81. Let me know. Where do you want the Browns to go at 54? Who should they draft? What position should they draft? And is there a player, no matter what the round? Is there a player you think, man, I'd love it if the Browns could get him? For me, late, it's Keaton Slovis. Um, Also, at running back, and again, with picking up Donta Foreman, um, much less of a need. And so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't draft a running back at all. If they did, my guy is Ray Davis. Trey Benson, I do like, but I wouldn't use him on 54. I, I think that's too much of a luxury. And in this super pass heavy offense that they're moving to, I just, it, Browns are going to be going committee from now on. So I don't, I don't think we'll be seeing a pick that high, but Ray Davis day three projection, five, eight, two, 11 at a university of Kentucky power runner, 4.5340, 21 total touchdowns, excellent footwork. Boy, and you saw decisive hitting the bag in the combine too, just quick feet, no hesitation. That's what you want to see. Uh, natural pass catcher. I think he could be kind of that Don to Foreman type. So maybe if they like somebody like that, it's uh, pick him up and put him on special teams for a year. I don't know. But Ray Davis for running back if you get one late. Keaton Slovis would be my quarterback. Adonai Mitchell's my dream wide receiver because of his combine. He's not getting there at 54. So I'll change my, it, you know, take him, please trade up. But Malachi Corley, like Nick said, I like him. Um, I wouldn't mind some Ricky Pearsall out of Florida. I haven't seen too much buzz about him. You might be able to get him in the third round. In and out of his cuts fast. A great route runner, 4.41 second 40, 6'1", 189. You know, that's somebody that's Cornelius Johnson. Has uh, has decent hands. Troy Franklin's kind of the, the main name we're hearing. Worthy's probably not going to be there with the speed, and he's got some bobble issues, but eh, that speed, I might take a chance on him. Wide receiver's so interesting. But let me know. Who do you want the Browns to take? Who are you writing down on your draft day movie card? Your Vontae Davis, Vontae Mack no matter what. Who's your Vontae Mack no matter what? pick for this draft that the brown if he's there if player x is there at 54 or wherever if he's available when the brown's name comes up on the draft board you gotta take him who is that for you leave comment get us on x on twitter at sick pod browns at andy mc81 instagram and tiktok at andy mc sports thanks so much to nick paulus from espn cleveland and to shane and the sick podcast crew it's draft day baby it's draft week it's draft night we'll give our reaction later in this week to the Browns uh, draft pick and see what the heck they do. So until next time, keep watching the sick podcast with Andy McNamara. Go Browns. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast with Andy McNamara on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google play and Apple podcasts.